to Johanna for the introduction. So as we have quite uh, strict deadlines, I will focus on, on to be as concrete as possible. Um, I will tell you about two initiatives that we have done recently when it comes to responsible gaming. But just to give you a bit of a background before that, I, I want to talk very shortly about the PATH strategy and overall how we do responsible gaming. There. Um, up to the right, you can see uh, the PATH strategy, the PATH way, the PATH guiding star, where you can see that responsible gaming is, is what we do, really. And we want to make sure that it's part of everything that we do. Um, and that is why we also feel that it's really important to work with concrete initiatives and, tr and really try to kind of drive it forward and learn more. Um, I also want to show you this picture, which is about how we do responsible gaming. We have actually kind of, uh, for ourselves, kind of divided it in different areas, where of course the prevention area in the middle is very important for us. So how can we prevent the customers from getting a problem with the gaming? Where you have, for example, limits, these different kind of mirroring tools that we call them, where the customers can see how much money they spend, how much time they spend. We have our radar process, which is about early detection and interventions, and so on. Um, we also have the building competence relationships uh, area, for example, that we make sure that our staff is trained when it comes to responsible gaming. And we also have the aftercare care area, for example, that we offer the treatment insurance to customers that get into a problematic gaming, uh, they will get professional help. Um, today, I have picked two of the initiatives, one from the prevention area and the other one from uh, related to personnel. But I will start with the one related to prevention. And I call this initiative Responsible Gaming Perspective on Know Your Customer. And also a bit back to kind of the, the background um, and to what we have been doing in our radar process where we have tried different kind of interventions towards the customers, um, different ways to make the customers aware, uh, make them reflect and take decision on how they would like to, to play. And from an operator point of view, uh, we feel that it's really important to, to help, guide, assist, and provide the tools for the customers. And in this uh, pilot project that we did, uh, we, want, we actually wanted to kind of mm, look into the question regarding how much money a customer is spending, and if that money that a certain customer is spending, is that okay uh, according to their individual situation? Um, and um, also we kind of wanted to mirroring it back to the customer, make them aware and try to actually get some actions from the customer. And what we did was that we took a group of quite high consuming customers and we wanted them to answer a series of questions about the gaming. And we also wanted to make sure that in the communication we had a friendly tone of voice and we also wanted to use motivational interviewing techniques to motivate the customers to reflect, but also to answer, of course. And how we did it was that we uh, sent an email to, to the email address and then a link uh, with a short questionnaire with three questions. Um, and uh, these were the questions that we asked and they are all related to do the customer understand how gambling works so that they can actually lose the money that they bet? Um, and we also ask them to reflect and confirm if the gaming is reasonable uh, when you compare it to your individual financial situation. And then we also ask that are you aware of these different tools that exist that could help you keep track of your gaming? So, and when we did this, we actually didn't know how the result would be. We didn't know if they would even answer uh, at all. But I will show you some, some early insights. We did this in August, so this is quite new. Um, this picture really emphasized also what we have learned with the other kinds of interventions that we do. And that is that we can see that the interventions actually change their behaviors 
But what we also see is that th there is very few that actually stop gaming. There is usually a couple that actually stop gaming after inter intervention, but not that many. In this case, it was 11%. And a bit interesting is that actually almost 40% increased their gaming after this, and 40 decreased, so that is still to be analyzed. But, but still, this that there is very few that stops is, is quite interesti interesting, I, th I believe. Uh, also in this group, you could see that uh, before this, this intervention, there were 11% that had a limit set, um, so not that many. After this intervention, 33% had set one. So it seemed like this, this kind of intervention at least uh, make, made some of the customers thinking a bit, and they took some actions. And to sum up shortly what we also learned, um, which, I th which I think has been discussed already today, that is a lot about the execution and the communication, to do it in the right way, and to use different techniques, how you ki could kind of motivate and, and make the customers aware and take the actions. From our point of view, we will still continue to analyze the results and see if we can do any improvements to the process. Um, and then include it in our radar process as one of the interventions that we do. Yes, then I will switch to my second one, which is from a completely different perspective, actually. Uh, it's about that we in PUFF have started to do screening for gaming problems among our personnel. And you might ask, why? Why do they do that? Well, basically, we wanted to address these four issues, um, quite general issues as well. Um, we believe that it's important to remove the stigma that we believe exists around gaming problems and address the fact that so few seek professional help. And we also want to increase the awareness about responsible gaming in the industry and society. And by starting to screening our own personnel, uh, our healthcare providers, they will then gain the experience how you to do this kind of screening, how to to meet these kind of persons that has this kind of problem, and it can be implemented more widely. And the fourth issue that we wanted to, to address was that research shows that people working in the gaming industry have a higher risk of developing a gaming problem. Um, and this is just my last slide about how we did it practically. Uh, so we started in spring this year, together with our medical partner uh, Medimar here on Åland. So pretty much what happens is that when personnel uh, goes to these regular healthcare checks, we will also do the screening for the gaming problem. And some control questions are asked. And if required, then it, a more thorough screening is done. And if an employee would be diagnosed with a gaming problem, uh, an individual treatment plan is created. And Medimar is also here today. So if you have any more uh, detailed question, they would be happy to answer as well, I'm sure. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs>